bringing in right now on this and of course what's going on with short stack down in north korea stephen yates who is a foreign policy expert he's an expert on a lot of stuff he was in the bush administration as an advisor to former vp dick cheney he's with the dc international advisory at yates dcia on twitter always a pleasure to have you stephen thank you so much for joining us all right so north korea south korea says that short stack kim jong-un is actually alive that the media reports aren't true but TMZ, everyone said that because TMZ had called Kobe, that TMZ said that that Kim Jong-un was dead or, or brain damaged or something was going on. What is the real story? I mean, can we even get the real story from anyone? I doubt that we could even get it, well, from South Korea or even China at this point. Well, first, I would note that the most important part of my daily intelligence briefing in my five years of the White House is what was TMZ telling me the night before. <laughs> but, uh, the, but when it comes to North Korea, uh, there's, there's absolutely no one that has really good, actionable information. It's one of the most uh, difficult things about the challenges it presents. Our intelligence community, even with billions and billions of dollars going in it, people trying hard, they don't really know. We've had well-meaning people like Franklin Graham that have done health and faith-based efforts to, that are charitable. They don't really know what's going on there. In the South Koreans, for heaven's sake, they speak the common language or right there on the peninsula face this threat. They don't really know. And from my point of view, it doesn't really matter because this is the most pulverized society that mankind has ever known. If you decapitate this chicken, it's still going to run around the yard for a long, long time. Uh, and it's the military that's running North Korea anyway. And so if mm -hmm. little broken man has fallen down and has no more toys to play with, he does have a very, very mean sister, uh, and there will be more other people that can, that can fill in. But North Korea really isn't going to be something that's going to be changing our narrative in the near future, I don't think, mm -hmm. given the bigger issues we're dealing with, with China, mm -hmm. uh, oil prices, and a whole bunch of other things happening in the world. Yeah, I know. I think that's incredibly important. And he apparently also had some health issues. I mean, he's, what, 5'6 and 300 pounds? I mean, he's got some issues, right? He needs a Peloton. He's got issues. And he a heck of a horse that's been carrying him around the mountains, though, for all those photo shoots. <laughs> that poor horse's legs. I haven't thought about that. Yeah, he's and he and you're right. The the military, it doesn't doesn't really matter if the, who runs it because the military does. But why do they have to have the family? I think that's the thing I don't understand, because now they're looking at the sister who, you know, if something happens to him, she's like plan D because the other brother, I guess, was too beta. So he was kind of disinherited. And then the other one was he was assassinated, I think. Yeah. And then and then the uncle was fed to dogs. And then this guy, I don't know. But the why this family, if the military runs it, why do they why do they need the Kims? It's very unusual. I mean, really, in terms of the study of modern dictatorships, the North Korea is unusual in the sense that they've kept it in the family. You look at the way things went in the Soviet Union, you look at communist China, Vietnam, other places, uh, you know, there, there are other, there, there, it's very rare that you're going to have a dictatorship get handed too many generations down the road. Uh, now, people can look at aristocracies of the past. Uh, but really, when you're looking at co the countries that call themselves communists, North Korea is the only one that has kept it in the family like this. But it's really a royal family kind of thing. It's the institution of the military and the total control of the populace that keeps this thing going. It is so bizarre. because You're right, because I don't know if I th – there isn't a country that's like – that has uh, – basically used a, a family like that as their avatar of authority but yet that's what they're doing with this family i have to ask well, you we though have the castros in cuba. well true yeah yes you're right the castros in cuba uh, the sister looks crazy i know from the previous coverage of the olympics in south korea they really blew her up and there were a lot of uh, some of the left didn't believe me but i saw trending there were a lot of verified accounts that were really celebrating uh, Kim Yo-jong and saying, can you believe that North Korea could have a, a female leader before the United States, which I didn't really, th I mean, I, my remark was I don't really think that she's that empowered if, you know, she's plan D in the line of succession there and she has to use her family's, her murderous regime family's military and death camps as a way to maintain rule. But is she, to me, it just seems she's just another pawn. She's the youngest. She was born, I think, what, in, in 87, 88, 
She just seems, uh, everyone says she's mean and that she would be a formidable opponent. I think that she's just a military puppet. What are your thoughts on on the sister and them now kind of talking about her and making her this icon? Well, I think it's ridiculous trying to make her the icon, but you have to you have to kind of respect her survivability. I mean, anyone that can kind of grow up and survive in that kind of a tough environment, she's probably got some seriously thick skin, and it probably is really, really tough. Uh, but at the same time, what has she done that anyone in the world knows? Yeah. And so you're really talking about an almost completely unknown prospect uh, possibly coming to power in a country that has no nuclear weapons, other really dangerous things that can be proliferated. Mm. Uh, we're concerned about a pandemic now. Uh, there's all kinds of crazy stuff that could come out of North Korea, just like this last virus came out of China. Uh, mm. So there's all kinds of reasons to be concerned. At the same time, I just don't see there's any reasonable analysis that can say why we should be more concerned with this very young current leader possibly passing from the scene mm. uh, and having a, a new version of that same family doing things when we've, you know, we've really not made major progress with North Korea for three decades plus. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and so we're going to have to find new ways to work with our friends and allies to contain and constrain. There's not really going to be engagement that's going to move that country in a direction that would make us happy. Even if the president wants to try again, which I wouldn't oppose, go ahead and try. Just don't believe it's going to work. I mean, is it, is it just that to me it seems like there's two, no matter if this family even existed, you, you have the, the military that's running this whole thing. You would pretty much have to take out all of their military leaders for, I mean, I'm not saying that this is what we're going to do, but that's, I mean, it, it, to have that sort of shift and that change you would almost have to have that to happen. I think that's how, I guess, my illustration of how uh, deep-rooted this is. Oh, it's, it's mo the most deep-rooted problem I think we've ever seen. Uh, and for anyone who can remember the allegory of the cave of someone going basically from shadows out into middle levels of light to going out into multicolor real sunlight, uh, I mean, North Korean society is so pulverized beyond any recognition, I think, to normal people anywhere in the world. And these are people that try to escape to impoverished rural China, thinking that they have made it wow. by getting to that level of development. Uh, and uh, if you've ever seen any videos of interviews with defectors, uh, it's just stunning. They, they, these are some of the most shattered human beings you're ever going to be able to witness. So even if you remove the military layer, the cultural difference in North Korea is so profound uh, that I think people, they, they just don't have any comprehension yeah. of, of what life and, and real life, real thinking is like in North Korea. Even if you took the Kim family out of the equation.